Well, welcome everybody and thank you for taking the time to be with us on the webinar here today. Uh, this webinar is being brought to you by UC Irvine Division of Continuing Education and today we're going to be talking about uh, the mathematics required and uh, uh, as a background for data science and data analytics. But before we get going, just want to make sure everybody knows how the webinar works. Uh, we do have the audio lines on mute just to cut down on the background noise. So up in the top right corner of your screen, uh, you should see a chat area and a Q&A area. Click on either one of those with any questions along the way. Uh, you know, we really encourage questions. It makes it better for everybody on the webinar when, when people ask questions. So utilize either one of those. We'll be monitoring those throughout the webinar, and I will get those questions uh, to our presenter here today. Uh, and again, this webinar uh, will be is scheduled for uh, one hour. Uh, we probably get done just a little bit before that. And by way of introductions, uh, my name is Dave Demas. Uh, I'm the Director of IT and Engineering Programs here, and I'm also a faculty member in the Department of Mechanical Engineering. Uh, we also have Jackie Badwa on this uh, call with us, and she is a program manager in this area. And, and we can be resources for you guys if you are considering uh, changing jobs or trying to get a better job within your existing organization. One of the things we do at the University of California is not only do research and teach undergraduates, but one of our missions is to make sure that the workforce, especially in the state of California and even outside in, of the U.S., uh, is, is strong and is well matched to the demands of industry. And this, the data science and the predictive analytics stuff is very, very new. So people come out of school do not typically have a lot of these skills. And that's what we do. We get into that gap and we understand it a lot. So we can guide you a little bit on, on your career path. We certainly have some classes that we'll talk about that might be valuable to you. Uh, so please, regardless of what, whether you take a class from us or not, uh, utilize us as a resource. That is one of the goals of the University of California. So please do that. Well, we're real fortunate today to have Dr. Ash Powell with us. Ash has been a, an incredible, valuable asset to us here at the university. Uh, he has come up with uh, many new programs in areas that he saw from looking at what was happening in the industry and saying, you know, we, we really need to uh, uh, get some content in these areas because, again, there is a gap between what people know and what the industry is, is, is needing for them to know in order for them to do a good job, in order for the companies to remain competitive. Uh, I'm going to let him go into a little bit more detail on his uh, wide background. Uh, Ash is on many of our advisory boards uh, and teaches several classes for us and has been in this industry for a long time. Ash, it's always a pleasure having you there, and I'm going to change seats with you here. Okay, all right. Get a little closer. Sure. Uh, thank you very much, Dave. Uh, now, this is Ash Pawa, and you are looking at uh, my uh, bio, a very brief bio here. Uh, if you want to uh, need to uh, uh, want to know more about uh, me, you can always go to my website, ashpawa.com. Uh, and I have uh, worked before for General Electric, AT&T Bell Laboratories, uh, and also Oracle. I've also been an entrepreneur. I've built um, a couple of companies. And my field of expertise primarily is in data science, predictive analytics, uh, and also mathematics. In, uh, in mathematics, basically, I uh, teach courses in calculus and also statistics. I also teach R programming language here at UC Irvine and also MATLAB at UCSD. Uh, and also I have done a lot of programming in Python. So anyway, I've got a, 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 a background both uh, in uh, mathematics as well as in computer science. So now this is the outline of this um, uh, webinar. So first of all, we are going to talk about uh, what are data science and predictive analytics. Uh, and so data science is nothing but a combination of computer science and mathematics. We are also very brief, uh, briefly going to look into the jobs which are available in, uh, in this industry uh, and the applications of data science. Uh, then, in fact, one of the major problems that we face here is that uh, people who like to take the data science track because there is a very heavy demand uh, for these uh, type of jobs, they usually lack uh, in mathematics. So the course that we are going to offer this summer 
Uh, we are, and, the, and in fact, that particular course is called uh, Mathematics Review for Data Science and, okay, and Analytics. So, so that is the, is the course that we will be offering in summer, and if there is enough demand for it, that course can continue further. Uh, and this is an online course, and anybody can register uh, for this course. And then in the end, I'm going to go through the entire outline of that course that we will be offering. Now, this course will be offering, uh, this course will be offered in summer, uh, and I'm going to tell you all the details about that, that course. So first of all, let us define what is data science. Now, data science is the extraction of knowledge from large volumes of structured or unstructured data. So uh, data science is a continuation of the field of data mining and predictive analytics. So these are the two buzzwords which are going on, which is uh, data science and also data mining, predictive analytics, and also artificial, in, uh, artificial intelligence. All these things are very, very similar to each other. Uh, but uh, so, and, and there is a huge demand for people who have this kind of a background. So what is predictive analytics? Now, now, predictive analytics is a specific and intentional use of analytics to solve business problems. Uh, and uh, so we have been also uh, seen about the Google Analytics. Now, Google Analytics only keeps track of the data uh, or the traffic which is coming to the website. But analytics is much, much bigger than that. In analytics, we capture the data and then try to predict something uh, from it. And no matter which industry you go to these days, uh, you know, you're going to find the applications for predictive analytics. So predictive analytics is a subset of analytics that deals with the forecasting of what's going to happen in future. And, we are, and here we use primarily mathematics and also data that we have captured to predict what are the probabilities of certain events which are going to happen in future. Now, data science has a different names. In fact, data science is also called a machine learning and also artificial intelligence. Basically, it's the same thing. The fundamental techniques that are being used in data science is the same as being used in machine learning. Uh, in fact, machine learning word is primarily used in academia. Uh, if you take any courses uh, here at UC Irvine or any other UC uh, uh, campuses, they are, they are offering courses in machine learning. But machine learning is nothing but artificial, in, artificial intelligence. Now, this particular uh, area of data science is also called data mining. And in the case of a data mining, what we are looking for are the patterns which are available in the data. And the same area is also called predictive analytics. Now, the predictive analytics is basically used in the business world where we are trying to predict something. So what is data science? Now, data science, as you can see, is a combination of these three things. Uh, first of all is the programming, which is, comes to the computer science thing. And then we have this big data, which is Hadoop, or it could be Spark, or whatever the case may be. We need some data. We need to have some way to store this data. And the third part, of course, is the mathematics. Uh, and, uh, in fact, if you take courses or if you have a degree in computer science, they usually don't touch this particular area. Uh, if, you take, if you have a degree in uh, uh, computer science, they're only going to talk about programming and also big data. But mathematics is something which is missing. Now, if you combine programming, mathematics, and big data, then this whole thing basically becomes data science. So in data science, what do we do? We have a source of data. Using that, we build models. And from there, we can predict what's going to happen. And here, we are computing the, pro uh, computing the probabilities of certain events. So data science is a combination of computer science and mathematics. Now, why these new uh, uh, technologies have become so popular? Because there are a lot of advancement which has occurred from the last uh, uh, 10 to 20 years in, in hardware and software. Now, we have very, very high-speed internet and also wireless. Uh, we also have smartphones from where we can capture the data. And also, we have uh, 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 the computing power has also increased significantly because of the cloud computing. In fact, with the cloud computing, we have virtually an infinite amount of computing power because we can keep on adding the servers after servers as the demand is increasing or as we have more work to do. And also the storage area size is also increasing because of the cloud. So there's a lot of improvement have been made in the area of hardware. Now in the area of software, of course, we have the, we have the ability to capture data. 
through the social media. People have iPhones from where uh, they can uh, they can interact, and all that data can can be captured. And also the availability of the data, of the data mining tools. Now R is also available for free, and Python is also free. Both of these two software packages are open source. Uh, in fact, earlier, uh, before R or Python, people used to rely on SPSS, which is a product of IBM. SPSS, of course, is a very, very good product, but it costs a lot of money. And there are other products also, which is SAS and Statistica, and there are a few other ones as well. And all of them um, have, you know, have a certain kind of a price. Uh, but R and Python, both of them, both of uh, the, uh, them are open source products. So if you want to build something on your desk, then you can use R. But if you want to have a web application, then for that you can use Python. So anyway, these are the two tools which are primarily used. So because of the availability of the software and hardware, this new area has been born, which is called predictive analytics or artificial intelligence or data mining or data science, whichever way you want to address that. Okay, now let's look into the jobs available. There are plenty of jobs in this area. In fact, the people are looking for uh, uh, people. There is a certain amount of scarcity here. So here, and again, if you want to confirm what I'm saying, you can use these keywords. Suppose if you go to indeed.com and search uh, that particular website using the keywords like uh, predictive analytics, marketing analytics, digital analytics, uh, or uh, data scientists or digital marketing, you're going to see uh, thousands of jobs which are going to come about. Uh, in fact, uh, here I have uh, one um, uh, 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 um, a screenshot of uh, the Indeed.com, and then you can see that there are more than 5,000 jobs available. And again, this is just one particular screenshot. The best way to find out the, the number of jobs that you have are you can go live right now to Indeed.com or any other sites like Monster.com or it could be uh, CareerBuilders.com and search for the word of data scientist. You're going to find, you know, very, very, um, you know, in fact, you're going to find a lot of jobs. Not only the jobs, the salaries that they are being paying are very, very high. In fact, if you have done your PhD in this particular area, you can, you know, send your resume um, uh, to Google, and next day they're going to send you uh, um, the airline ticket to, to basically just go and fly <laughs> out there <laughs> because they are hungry for people. So, again, and, and as you can see, the salary that have been offered at Google is very high. I've heard that thing that the starting salary for a PhD at uh, Google is somewhere around two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. Whoa, whoa, I'm applying. That's pretty good. <laughs> hey, Ash, is that is that uh, search? Uh, is it just U.S. or is it uh, yeah. Orange County or? Yeah, no, I'm it? only searching in USA. Okay. Here. So these numbers are only for USA. Uh, but again, I basically search on predictive analytics as a keyword. You can use many other keywords, as I said before, that in order to, to search these things, you can, you can use any of these keywords, and you will find different you know, types of jobs gonna come in, uh, and are going to come. Because most of the time, employers use different type of keywords to advertise their jobs. So, that, so in fact, uh, so these are the most common uh, uh, keywords which are being used. Uh, but you can try a, a few other things as well with uh, some kind of combination of these. But this is the best way to find out how many jobs are there. So there is a huge demand for the people. Now let us look into the major data science applications. Now, enough for the, the, the first. Uh, in fact, it is very difficult uh, to, to find a business where they don't have an application. Means, in fact, uh, this area of data science is just becoming as uh, basic as uh, 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 mathematics. So, since mathematics is used every place, or the computers are used every place, uh, you, you know, I mean, just like that, data science is also being used in all different industries. So, if you go to business, you're going to find a whole lot of applications uh, for the manufacturing, and also for healthcare and medicine, and for science. Um, and entertainment, internet, government, and also national security. In fact, it is very hard to find an area that does not have some kind of an analytics application. 
In fact, the biggest uh, or the best possible application of uh, data science is Amazon Recommender System. As you can see that I'm sure everybody is uh, who, who, who's uh, uh, listening to this particular webinar must have bought something from Amazon. Amazon has a fantastic, uh, one of the world's best uh, recommender system. Now this recommender system is based on data science. Is they, they in fact primarily used uh, you know, uh, uh, data science techniques, artificial uh, uh, intelligence techniques to find those customers who have interest in buying those products. And Amazon has been a very, very successful company. Uh, in fact, the, the, you know, the price of the stock of Amazon is close to $1,000. Uh, and so again, this is one of the areas where uh, you, know, you can see the huge, huge application of um, uh, data science. So in order to identify who are your customers who have interest in buying certain products, that is the major, uh, you know, what we call it as the killer app uh, for data science. So if I can identify those people who have interest in buying something, I'm just gonna address those people. And using the data, we can figure that out. So this way you can increase your conversion ratios. And Amazon, of course, is a, is a prime example of that. Now the next example of uh, data science is of course self-driving cars. I mean, this is the most, uh, uh, I would say the sexiest job that or kind of application you can have. Uh, I mean, and that is the way the future is. I mean, the, in most of the new cars which are coming out, they have some feature uh, for, uh, for the self-driving cars. Now what is a self-driving car? Self-driving car is nothing but, a, like, um, um, but an application of data science. So what the car is doing is that using, uh, there are so many sensors in the cars, and along with three different um, uh, cameras which are, which are built in, car is collecting tons and tons of data. And that data basically is being processed, and the car is doing a prediction of what's gonna happen in the next five seconds. Based on that, the car makes the decisions. So you can basically sit in the car on your wheel and, and start your uh, uh, self-driving feature, and then you can take a nap. Uh, we, have, we are not there yet. Don't do it right now. Yeah, but maybe, maybe, maybe you trust five, there's no bugs in the software, right? That's true. <laughs> of course, there, there, you know, I mean, there will be there will be a few problems which are going to come about. But we are basically getting to that place. No, no technology has reached uh, uh, perfection in the first attempt. But we are there. In fact, I drive a Tesla. And again, again, I basically put that thing in the autonomous uh, driving state, and then I go to highway. And then, in fact, I don't have to be so much alert. That's what it is, because if I goof up for just for a second or two, car will take care of itself. So that is the state where we are reached at. But again, besides all these things, uh, I mean, the self-driving car is a primary application for data science. So again, if you're doing some work in this area, Google is looking for people who have done this area. Not only Google, but also Mercedes-Benz, and so on and on. There are hundreds of other uh, uh, places out there where you can you have, where you can find employment if you have done some work in this area. So now, in fact, um, a data science basically, uh, it has been said that, uh, uh, that the future belongs to people and companies that convert data into products. So as you know, the, this person, Hal Varian, Hal Varian is the chief economist at Google, and he was earlier um, a professor at uh, UC Berkeley uh, in the Department of Economics, uh, and he is basically saying that statistics is the next sexy job. And he's saying that you have to learn statistics. During my time, when I went to college, statistics never used to get a whole lot of importance. We used to primarily focus on calculus uh, because I was an engineering graduate, so we used to study engineering primarily. Um, but these days, uh, now statistics has, has, uh, has gained a lot of importance uh, and because there are a whole lot of applications uh, for statistics. So it's almost mandatory that anybody right now who graduates from college should have a very solid understanding of statistics. And in fact, Tom, uh, there's another guy, his name is Tim O'Reilly, he says that uh, data is the next Intel insight. As you recall that a few years back, Intel used to have this kind of a marketing campaign. They used to say Intel insight. Intel based in, they tried to promote their own processes. But now they are saying is that now data is the next Intel, uh, Intel insight. So anyway, these are just some of the words which have been said by other people which show the importance of the area of artificial intelligence.
All right, okay, so now let's look into what is a data science application. And now, uh, if, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, and we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna use a little pointer for a second. So on yeah. the left-hand side, click down to it. Okay. And then pick which one you want. You want just probably the pencil. Yeah, this uh, right there. This that little guy right there. Okay. And then, okay. it's, whoa, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty it's big, it's but at least you can put some dots right. where it is. Right, yes, exactly. Okay, so now uh, let us look into what is a data science application. So in a data science application, first of all, of course, we need this data. That thing is the most important thing. And how do you store the data? We can either use Hadoop, or we can also use many other systems which are coming up, which are competing with, uh, with Hadoop. Uh, these are called Spark stations, which are coming. And so either way, here you store the data. Then you'd also require a database management system, basically. And here you can use the NoSQL because you don't have a structured data. When you do this, this all these applications, you may, you may not necessarily have the structured data. You can also have images and text data. You have to do all those things. Then you have to learn all these data mining techniques, which is data mining, machine learning, and predictive analytics. And then after that, you ha also have to learn about the statistics. And then uh, you also need a data visualization uh, type of application as well, uh, which is uh, one of the, the software tools which does data visualization is called Tableau. Uh, so again, as a combination of these things, now you have basically built a, uh, built a data science application. So that's, these, are the, uh, these are the elements which are required to build a real uh, um, uh, a data science application. So one of the, um, one of the foundations of, uh, 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 of data science applications, as I said in the previous slide, is statistics. So what are the things that we have to look for in this area? So we, we basically deal with correlation and, and also covariance. We also deal with inference statistics, which is a central limit theorem, margin of errors, and confidence intervals. And then we do the hypothesis testing. This is very, very important. Uh, and, and also we can use ANOVA, which stands for analysis of variance, or uh, the chi-square, whichever the case may be. We can also do some t-statistics, normalities, and p-values. So uh, all of these things are needed to build a model. See, the model basically gives you the probabilities and based on the data. So we have to understand basically how, what, um, the, the, when we build these models, the, these models are going to spit out certain uh, information. In order for us to interpret that information, we have to have a very solid understanding of statistics. So that is the reason why we are offering this course here um, and um, which, in which we are going to cover uh, actually a lot of statistics. Okay, so these are the tools which are available for, for, for predictive analytics. Um, and now, as you can see, the main one, of course, is R that we use quite a lot here. And then, of course, um, we sometimes we also use NIME, and, uh, and, and also we use Python. If you want to build, if you want to build a web application, then Python is the one here that is being used. But if you have a desktop application, then you can use R. Then R and also Python are both of them are free. But if you want to use any other software like SPSS, okay, again SPSS is a very good software, but costs a lot of money. Uh, and of course, Oracle they also have SQL Server, which is coming from Microsoft and also Excel, and all the other ones, except for a few other ones, in fact, the, uh, this Weka is also free, and maybe a few other ones are also free. Now, there's another company called Altrex. They are located here in Irvine, uh, and their head office is here, and they are also uh, doing very well financially because they are selling a lot of software uh, to the corporations where they can do the machine learning. So there are a whole lot of tools that are available, but the courses that we offer here at UC Irvine uh, we basically use R software or we use Python for that. So these are the two uh, uh, free uh, software available to us. In fact, they are not only they are free, but also they are very, very good. Again, I use R not because it is free. Even if I had to pay for R, I would pay for R. But R is, <laughs> by the way, free anyway. Uh, so Python is also very, very good because it has been developed by thousands of people uh, and slowly it has reached at a place that it has become extremely good. So both R and Python are used for machine learning and data, data science. 
Okay, so see, and now let us look into what kind of a major problem that we face. Now, when the students basically join the data science program, most of the time they, ha they don't have the mathematics background. Because many, many students of, or many people who are, who are employees right now, they have gone to college a long time back and they have kind of forgotten about uh, uh, the math because we don't use this high level math every day in our life. Uh, so they might have forgotten it. And also a lot of people who have graduated but they never took uh, math as one of the courses. In order for you to, um, to do some work in the area of uh, uh, predictive analytics or data science or analytics, you've got to have math because without math you cannot do anything about it. So this is a problem that we see uh, in, the, in the industry and to solve that problem we are offering this course in summer. So, the, so this goal of this course that we will be offering in summer, it's called uh, the Mathematics Review for Data Science uh, and uh, Analytics. So this course is for those who have not taken a course in advanced algebra, pre-calculus, or statistics. So again, um, again, this particular course is equal to the first college level math course. So, or if you, uh, or, or it is also useful for students who may have taken these, these classes a long time ago, but need some kind of a refresher on these kind of a concepts. Uh, so uh, that is the that is the, that is the goal is to basically bring all the students to that level that they can understand all the stuff that is being talked about in the in the data science uh, courses. So this is now the outline of the course. Now I'm going to be going very slowly here. Going to, going to explain everything. So first is my lesson number zero. It means this is the type of uh, uh, background I would like the, the students to have. So uh, again, everybody should have some basic algebra like the uh, I mean, properties of real numbers, inequalities, uh, math on the Cartesian planes and slope and distance formulas and all those things. So this is the place from where I'm going to start. So my first lesson will be basically on my algebra, which is functions, linear functions, inverse function, matrices, and quadratic functions, polynomial functions, and also radical functions, exponential and, and the log functions. And we're also going to touch uh, the sequences and series, a little bit of trig, uh, and the system for linear equations, and the set theory, and also the Venn diagram. So this is my first uh, two lessons. And then after that, I'm going to cover very little on the pre-calculus. Because although in, when we do the data science, we don't use a whole lot of calculus, but there should be some concepts a student should know about the concepts of uh, limits and also the derivative of functions and some basic integrals. So this is, again, something very, very basic about the calculus. So this stuff is usually covered in the pre-calculus courses uh, in the high school uh, he, uh, um, you know, here in Irvine. Then after that, I'm going to get into statistics because that is the focus of the course. So the first thing which I'm going to talk about would be the data variables and samples and displaying and summarizing data. It means I'm going to now talk about mean, median, mode, and standard deviations, and how to you can represent the data. Uh, and then we're also going to talk about, um, uh, also, about uh, also talk about the normal distribution and the z-scores. So all these things will be coming up in lesson number four. Uh, and then after that, in lesson number five, I'm going to cover a little bit more on the covariance and correlation and normal distribution. Now, uh, this is a very, very important uh, topic because the entire, uh, I mean, central limit theorem as well as uh, the hypothesis testing is based on this, this concept. So I'm going to cover in a lot more detail this normal distribution and covariance and uh, correlation. And then in lesson six, I'm going to talk about the sampling issues. Now I'm probably getting into the, my, uh, 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 the central limit theorem. Central limit theorem is a foundation of statistics. Uh, and uh, this is the place, uh, this is, uh, uh, from here we can do the inference statistics. So we'll cover the, we'll cover the central limit theorem in a lot more detail. And from there we can also estimate the parameters and also the confidence intervals. Now, uh, uh, the issue is just that why do we need all this stuff? Because when we build the models, the models are going to give us their output by giving us the confidence intervals uh, of uh, certain parameters. So we need to have some basic understanding of the, of the central limit theorem and also confidence intervals. Now, the next thing is the most important part, which is 
the hypothesis testing. The hypothesis testing is the foundation for uh, uh, inference. So if we need to do the prediction, it means we are doing the inference on the data that what uh, the, you know, thing may happen. From here, we are going to compute the probabilities and going to test whether our hypothesis is true or not. This is the foundation for self-driving cars. Self-driving cars basically are doing nothing but basically doing the hypothesis uh, testing. And using this, a machine can take the decision all by themselves. So if they basically compute what is the probability, and if the probability is 95% or higher that certain events are going to happen, the car is going to take that decision. So human intervention is not required in this case. So hypothesis testing is a basic idea or basic concept on which all, the, uh, all uh, machine learning basically works. So we will be covering the in, in quite detail uh, this hypothesis testing. Then after that, we can, we'll start building the model. Now this is the beginning of uh, predictive analytics or machine learning. So basically what regression is that if I have certain amount of data, and suppose if I, if I have this data, and this data around here, and this data around here, this data around here, then I, I'm going to find a line that goes between all of that data. So this, the equation of this line is called regression. Now regression, we're just going to touch a little bit about it because now we are entering basically machine learning. Now machine learning, of course, involves not only regression, but also support vector machines, uh, neural networks, uh, and decision trees, and a whole lot of other techniques are there. So this is the first step that we do where we have to go through in order to, in order to do the machine learning. So this is the place from where we will, uh, uh, maybe we are going to end this course uh, when, when we talk about regression. Once you have covered regression, then you are ready to take machine learning or the data science courses. And the last lesson I have is on linear algebra. And linear algebra is used all over the place when we do the regression, when we do anything, we basically do a whole lot of linear, linear algebra. In fact, the linear algebra deals with the vectors and matrices. So we'll talk about how we can and multiply the uh, two matrices and we can compute the eigenvalues and a whole lot of other things as well. So we can compute the eigenvalues, determinants, and a whole lot of other things which are related to linear algebra. So these nine lessons will provide you with a very solid foundation of, uh, of uh, uh, the basic mathematics which is required to, to take the course uh, in machine learning area. So now let us look into the courses that we are going to offer. Uh, and uh, so, uh, so we, are, we, are, we are offering these courses in summer of 2017. And so these courses are starting just in a few weeks. In fact, these courses are, are basically coming up in the Division of Continuing Education, and the this course is starting on June, on June 26th to uh, till August 21st. So this is a nine weeks course, uh, and uh, so this course is starting up in which, and I have just uh, a few minutes back, I've given you the details of all of my nine lessons. So this will basically prepare you uh, to do, uh, to, do uh, to take the data science courses. So um, uh, if, you, if you have a requirement or if you want to review your, your mathematics, please register for this course. Uh, and this course will be offered online. And the way I teach this course is that, um, you know, I give a lot of problems to solve. See, there are a few things in life you cannot, you cannot learn unless certainly you do this thing. In fact, one of the other things is called swimming. If you want to learn swimming, you cannot watch videos. You cannot uh, read books on swimming. The, in fact, the best way to, to learn swimming is that you go especially in the deep section of your pool and just jump in. And once you start thinking on it, you will figure it out all by yourself <laughs> how, 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 how to swim. So the same thing is also true with mathematics. In mathematics, you can read. You will never be able to figure it out. If I give you some problems to solve, uh, that is the way you are going to figure it out. So it is a, it's, a, it's a, that kind of a sign. So my courses, basically, I give a lot of problems. Uh, but again, you don't uh, mean, uh, but also I, am, I give also uh, a lot of A grades as well. So don't worry that if, you, if you're not going to solve anything, you, you're going to flunk. Uh, people don't flunk in my classes. So the thing is this, that because I give them a lot of work to do, 
And if you are able to at least do half of them or 75 percent of them, then then you are then you are in good shape. But I give you a lot of load on it. One of the questions that came up, and please keep asking the questions. We'll get back to them. Is that you know I, uh, one person just writes that I haven't uh, taken math for uh, since I took uh, you know uh, algebra in in high school. It's been a while. Uh, is it okay for me to join this class? Right. Yeah. If you have high school background, high school math background. Then, in fact, uh, you cannot graduate, at least in the state of California, uh, you cannot get a high school degree unless certainly you have taken two, three courses in math. So that should be sufficient for you to uh, to basically uh, register for this course and, and do well in this course. Uh, but if you have taken some courses in math in, uh, in college as well, because a lot of the places, they will require you to take a few basic courses in math, then you will be okay. So high school level math is a prerequisite for this course. And one of the things that Ash does a really good job of, because I know people are on the other side that, that know quite a bit of this stuff, uh, you know, he, he balances really good between people that are um, ha have less of a math background and people that have more of a background. Uh, so he's got extra work for those guys that are uh, that are really good at it, and then he's really good tutorial wise helping out some of the people that, uh, that, that uh, it's been a while or they're a little rusty on their math, right? Right, yes. And again, when I, in fact, I also teach the courses in our language here at UC Irvine, and I, I see all the time that people who come to the R courses or who have come for the data science courses really struggle quite a lot. And again, it is not their fault. They just don't have the math background. They should, you know, basically go through these math courses and then register. Then they will do very well. Uh, so again, if you do not have a very strong back, uh, math background, and if you jump into any of the data science courses, you're going to find data science to be very difficult. But that is not the case. The reason they are having a tough time is because you don't have the math background. If you strengthen your background, uh, background in math, then you will do very well. Ash, another question that came up is, uh, would you would you consider this uh, this class uh, theoretical or practical? Both, uh, because of course I will be going to the theory. Math is nothing but the theory. Uh, but uh, one of the ways I say it is very practical is that because I'm going to give you a lot of problems to solve. So every week there will be a you know, there will be a homework assignment and there will be quite a number of problems. There are to applied solve. practical right. things that you need as a data scientist. That's right. So that is the one that will, of course, uh, will. And again, it, it is very important that you do those homework assignments and try uh, try them out. Don't worry whether your answer is correct or not. At least, um, I mean, go through the process. And of course, at the end of the uh, that week, I will also post the correct answers as well. Right, right. And and this so, is well, like like many classes. This is. This is not taught out of the math department here at the university. Uh, the math department, you would you would derive every single one of these formulas, right, yes. and, and go back in heavy, heavy detail. Uh, that that is not what, what we're doing here. Right, and there will not be any proof. So you, math is nothing but proofs. If you go at the college level or at the postgraduate level, there is nothing but proofs. But we again, we are not going to do any proofs. We have you're going to take some real world problems. Uh, and the way you can apply those skills to solve those problems. Uh, and uh, so, and, and also at the end of the week, once you see the answers of those, those problems, uh, that will allow you to even, uh, you know, check if, 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 your, if, if your work is um, uh, correct or not. So, okay. there are, so this is the way you can verify uh, whether you have done, done something right or not. And, and a lot of good questions coming in here. Keep going, guys. But uh, one of the last questions was, what, uh, what's more important, R or Python? Now, that's a pretty heavy philosophical question. <laughs> you answered that a little bit, right. saying that Python was a little better if you're going to go and build out a, a website or something. Right. But honestly, that's, that's a pretty... Yes, I, in fact, both of them can be used. And as I said before, that R is primarily used for the desktop application. Now, suppose if you have some data... And all you need to do is to just process the data, build a model, run R, you, uh, R will just work just fine. But now suppose take another situation. Your data is coming uh, via web, and it is uh, kind of live, uh, it, 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 it is a live application. So as the data is coming in, the system is basically processing that data and predicting what's going to happen. 
for those type of applications, Python would be better because if it is a web application which is running on a web server, then you can use Python. But Python can also be used for desktop as well because it runs on your desktop as well. But the basic architecture of Python is that it is running on a server uh, where these things, things are happening. So that way, uh, both of them are slightly different, uh, but both of them are open source. Both of them doesn't cost you any money. Uh, and so the best thing would be to learn, first of all, R, because it's, it's very, you can very easily install that thing. And once you know R, you can very easily also run Python. We can very easily uh, learn Python, because Python and also R are, are very, very similar to each other. Okay, and one of the other questions is when is the, Jeremy was just asking when, when the course is available again, and, and we did, we did uh, answer that, but it is coming up uh, on, on, it's online, and it's coming up starting at the end of June, yeah, on June 26th. Yeah. On, on June, June 26th till August 21st. So this course is there, which is, uh, it is a nine weeks course, and I'm giving you the details of all the nine weeks. Okay, and let's see, I'm gonna make sure we get all the, Okay, guys, we're just reading some of the questions here. Go ahead, Ash, if you had some other, okay. Uh, if someone that oh, has how much work, work. How much work is the class? Right, I mean, each, uh, in, my, um, in my video lectures are going to be close to one to two hours a week, and then it will need around four or five hours of homework assignments. Uh, work will be there. Uh, and again, if you choose not to do homework assignments, then your whole course is useless. If you don't work in it, then you will not understand anything. So that is the reason why uh, it's very, very important to do. But so you have to at least allocate uh, between five, seven hours a week uh, to, to, to take this course. And again, these are online courses, guys. So uh, what, what we do is Ash records the lectures and posts them. So you can listen to them and they're, they're chunked up in short pieces, so you don't have to, you're not listening to a couple hours all at once, right? Yes. You're doing 15 minutes here, 10, whenever you can fit it in. And they're all online, so you can listen to the lectures anytime you want during the week. Right. Uh, we recommend you listen to them fairly early in the week, so you can do the homework. Uh, if you already know some of the stuff, you could blast through the homework okay. But it's, it's, it's you know, certainly it's not a self-paced class because, you know, Ash is assigning homework to me every week. You're getting university credit for the class. But since it's online, it can map into, you know, your busy schedules. Many of you, or most of you are working. Many of you have children or an aging parent to take care of or soccer practice, right? So uh, we find that people uh, are able to since these classes are so flexible. Uh, the other really nice thing about the classes, and somebody else asked this question, is there's, there's going to be 20 or 25 people in this class many of whom might live near you, and some of them are already in this industry. And they can be incredibly valuable assets to you later on when you're trying to get job or move, move uh, organizations or get that first foot in the door in a data science or predictive analytics job. So keep both of those things in mind. A couple other yes. questions. Yes, in fact, there was another question came up was that, uh, will there be any final examination or midterm examination? No, I don't, I, I don't uh, give final exams. My, uh, the only way you can learn this whole thing is that uh, you do those problems which I'm gonna assign you. Uh, again, the goal remains to be not to give you any, anything less than A. Uh, the goal remains to be so that you do some work in it. Uh, so again, this is not a kind of a college level course in which uh, there is a, you know, I mean, professor always asks tricky questions uh, to basically kind of trick students so that they fail. And yeah. uh, that is not the goal of all uh, of these uh, courses are, that you learn there is no final examination, but every week there will be a homework assignment in which there will be around to 10 to 15 problems depending upon what the subject matter is. And it will take you around four, five, seven hours uh, to finish that work. Uh, and uh, so all you need to do is to uh, basically type all the answers, uh, and you can use Microsoft Word. They have an equation in which you can write mathematics there uh, and then convert that into PDF format and, and basically turn that thing in. Uh, and so this is the way basically we uh, plan to And again, our, our philosophy, you know, undergraduate, it's, it's more of a weed out philosophy, right? 
uh, we, they want to kind of weed people out. They're 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 looking to make things pretty pretty tough, and then weed people out as they move up. Our, our philosophy is very different. We are still part of the University of California, but it's professional education. So we are here to help help you step up and move forward in your career. So so again, grading scales and everything uh, uh, are very different, and and the philosophy is very different. All right. Yeah, was there other ones? It was about a master's degree. Uh, no idea what is this. So uh, one of the questions was about, uh, uh, you know, these kinds of studies and their reflection in industry. Uh, at this point, any any certificate uh, that uh, talks about data science, you know, and especially if it's coming from a school like the University of California, certainly carries a lot of weight, along with even just an individual course. If you can list that, hey, I took a data science class um, from the University of California, or if you took a series of classes, four or five classes, and got a full certificate in predictive analytics or data science, it does carry a lot of weight. And again, mostly because the demand is so high. People are thinking right now they've got to take an, um, a, a math major, a computer science major, or even a marketing or business major and make them into a data scientist within their own organization. And that's a lot of work for them, but that's what most companies are doing right now because they cannot find enough people to fill the jobs. So uh, it, these, especially with the University of California, fairly high, highly uh, valued uh, courses on your resume. Uh, there, another question was, is there a master's degree? There are several really good master's degree. University, the UC Irvine has a sum that uh, are related, but not exactly data science and predictive analytics. Uh, most of those master's degree do require you to go back here at the University of California to go back kind of full time-ish, uh, but we have recommendations for several very good part-time programs at John Hopkins at Chicago that do have part-time master's degree programs. The only other caveat to the master's degree programs is they are going to be expensive. Now, they're really quite valuable, but they're going to be expensive. So what we recommend is you come in and take a few of these kind of classes, which are much cheaper. They're maybe around $700 for, for one class. Take a few of those. Make sure you're, you're good with all this. Get some good background. Maybe even uh, you won't have to take a few classes in your master's because you took some from us. Uh, and then if you really think you, you need to spend forty dollars or $50,000 getting a master's, which you might, it's still a good thing to have on your resume, uh, then you can decide to, uh, you know, you, you can make that decision. Okay, so yeah, the other question that just came up is if you went through the full sequence, and again, Ash really didn't go through all those sequences. We're talking about a class, but we have a sequence in predictive. We have a sequence in big data. We have a sequence in data science. Uh, we have several related sequences here. Uh, you can look on our website, UCI, uh, under Division of Continuing Education, DCE, and you'll see all the, uh, all the related programs we have. Uh, those are certificate programs if you finish them out, um, if you finish out. And then usually they're anywhere from four to six classes. Usually people take one or maybe two classes a quarter because most of the people, again, are working adults that take the classes. Okay, so, and there is, by the way, another, another couple of questions came in about overlap between the program. This particular course can feed data science, predictive analytics, big data. Uh, it feeds all of them. It's a background course for a lot of those courses. And what many of our students do is they come in and take maybe this as a prerequisite, and then they try a data science class and say, no, I, I really want to do a little bit more predictive, or, or no, I want to dig deeper into the big data. Uh, so they move around a lot. But most of those courses uh, are, are not lost because usually you can use a, a, a data science class as an elective in predictive analytics or vice versa, or a data science or predictive analytics course as an elective in uh, big data, for example. So we're, we're flexible here. We're, we're Again, we are here to help you move forward whatever way we can, and uh, we are very flexible. Okay, I, do you see any more? Let's see. Can I take the pretty analytics first and then take the big data? Yeah, and again, you can take things in, in different orders, and, and again, if you, if, 
the, the webinar has been recorded, so if you've got questions, specific questions about jobs or anything at all, you scroll back to, uh, when you get the link to the webinar, scroll back to the uh, contact information and Jackie, who's on our, our webinar right now, Jackie Badwa, her information yeah, is there. He is. If you scroll all the way back there, click it all the way through the slide, uh, you can contact Jackie and she can tell you all about any other questions about what things you might want to take first. I think it was the second slide. Right, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, so, so you can contact uh, Jackie and uh, she can help you out. And she, she is very, very good because she's heard stories from all sorts of people in all sorts of positions in their careers. Uh, some people out of work that are scared about getting a job because they got to make money. They other returning veterans. We've got people that are undergraduates that just got out of school and they're figuring, I got a I got a business degree or a sociology degree. How am I going to get a job? Uh, and they look at things like this and they go, Wow, this you know I can take some courses and this might really help the marketability of my resume. Uh, so we, we're used to talking to all sorts of people. Jackie's very good at helping people out, so please feel free to contact her. And let me see. I'm still looking if there's other questions there. No. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and, and again, some other questions about the differences between data science and predictive analytics. Uh, predictive analytics goes through a fairly uh, uh, standard process of uh, cleaning up the data, uh, or first of all, overview of predictive analytics, what it's all about. Then we clean up the data, then, and that's a whole course, and then we model the data, then we deploy the model, uh, and, and that sequence is, is pretty standard for most predictive analytics models. Data science is a little, the data science curriculum is, there is some overlap between the two. Uh, there's a, a few less courses, but data science is looking a little bit more at some of the stuff Ash was talking about, but also more in the visualization uh, part of the data and some of the tools like Tableau. Uh, a little bit of overview of some of the similar kind of things that Ash was showing you as far as other tools that are available to help collect and, and get information about the data uh, without building an entire model like Ash showed you the Amazon model. That's, that's a very large model behind the scenes that's running and that's more a little bit more of something that you would get out of predictive analytics uh, program. But again, there's some overlap and again, if there's any questions at all on where you should start, uh, give us a call. We, we'd certainly be happy to help. And again, don't you, you can't go wrong uh, starting with either a intro to data science or intro to predictive analytics. Um, you know, because they are electives in other programs, and because they're they're fairly generic. Uh, taking either one of them could help get you uh, to a point where you can decide how you want to go uh, forward in your career. There was one more question that came up: is that how are the data science and predictive analytics certificates program different? Uh, now, in, in fact, data, as I said before, if you look into my slides here, uh, let me get to that slide where I talk about this stuff, is that all these things are pretty much the same thing. In fact, data science is kind of a, a kind of umbrella uh, for all of these things, which is uh, machine learning and data mining and predictive analytics. Uh, so, uh, in fact, data science, is just a name for uh, for all of these sciences, but basically data science is the same thing as machine learning and data mining and predictive analytics. But however, the big data is slightly different because big data deals with the database management systems and also Hadoop and Spark. So there is a way by which you can store the data. So now Hadoop and uh, data science and the big data becomes a, becomes a part of uh, the computer science and, and also the database management systems, uh, whereas this predictive analytics is kind of a combination, so uh, just a combination of uh, mathematics and also computer science. So big data is about the databases, whereas predictive analytics or artificial intelligence is about building the models. And one of the other questions that came in is somebody that travels a lot. Uh, and it really doesn't matter. We have people throughout the world that take these classes. So uh, if you're traveling a lot, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, whenever you're awake you uh, and have time, you jump into the class. 
it, it is it's somewhat asynchronous. You're, you're, not, you're not having to be at a particular time, at a, a particular place to listen to anything. It's all posted up there. You are interacting with other students and the instructor, but it, it's not always real time. In fact, usually it's asynchronous where you post something and then a, you know, a little half hour later, a couple other people post, and then you come back on the next day and see the, uh, the, the posts and the reactions or maybe a, a comment from Ash. And it's pretty fluid throughout, throughout the whole 24 hour uh, day and throughout the whole seven day week. Uh, so it doesn't matter where you are or if you're traveling. Okay, I think we're about out of time, but if there's any other questions at all, uh, please uh, contact us. Uh, this, again, is an incredibly exciting field. It's really fun. We get people in these courses of a variety of backgrounds. Honestly, the ones that do really well are the ones that are maybe more subject matter experts in, in uh, or maybe they're the business and marketing people within their organization that understand the little bit about the business but just need to know a little more about some of these tools so they can figure out how to use some of them in order to gain a market advantage. And again, some of those guys and, and girls are, are often in, in a marketing department. Uh, so uh, it's, uh, it's a real fun place to be. And with that, I'm just going to say thank you to all of you guys for hanging out with us. I know a lot of you, it was your lunch hour. So uh, we appreciate that. And as always, Ash, thank you so much for, right. for everything that you do, uh, jumping in here at lunch all the time, building courses for us, and uh, staying current uh, in this fun and exciting area. And with that, just have a great afternoon, everybody. Thanks again, Ash. Thank you.